By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to look at a match between Mono Black versus Mono Blue. And the Mono Black player is Yoop. And his deck is quite interesting because he's playing Mono Black Control. He's playing with, for example, four Nettling Imp. So it's a very interesting deck. I'm battling his forces with a mono blue aggro strategy, also called my budget blue deck. It's very budget friendly and easy to make yourself. So if you like it, keep an eye on it. You can make the same deck, I guess. It's very budget friendly. Now, before I jump into the deck decks, I've got deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to point out that as always, I've put timestamps in the description below. So if you first wanna to go to the match, for example, I know some players prefer first watching the match and then the deck deck. The easiest way to do this is by checking that description below and click on the timestamp that reads MTG Games because that'll take you straight to the games. And also in the description below, you can find more information about the rule set if that is the kind of stuff you're interested about. Okay, now that that is out of the way, we're going to start with the deck decks. I'm gonna start with the deck of my opponent, Yoop. Let's take a look at his mono black deck. And here we see the deck of my opponent, Yoop. It's mono black and he's called it I'm Perfect because there are so many imps in here. So imp as in I'm Perfect. You know, you get it. Anyway, <laughs> there, are, there are four Nettling Imps in here. And I think the reason there are four Imps in here is because he owns a global set. So he wanted to have a deck with the Alpha, Beta, Unlimited and Summer Edition Imp in one deck. And obviously what I like with these kind of brews is that you've got a good starting point because you're starting with an original card that doesn't see a lot of play. So because you're starting with Netling Imp, you're automatically going to think in all these little forgotten combos, right? You you see uh, Royal Assassin, you see Sorcerer's Queen, you see Sangir Vampire. I mean, that's kind of the dream, right? Having Netling Imp, Sorcerer's Queen and Sangir Vampire on the board, right? That's that's what you want to have in life. And then automatically you're going to add cards like Icy Manipulator because they go so well with, with the Imp, but also with the Royal Assassin. So because... You're, you're starting with an original card. The deck that you end up with is more original and you're just seeing a lot of fun and cool cards. And I think that's an important part of Magic. Why would you only play with the 5% top cards in the card pool of 93, 94 when you can make so many cool combinations? And actually, I think this deck, it's pretty good. And one of the main reasons that it's good, in my opinion, are the Dark Rituals. Because with the Dark Rituals, you can accelerate. Because the problem with this deck is probably you've got too many 1-1s, one they're too clunky, they're too expensive to cast, you have to wait a whole turn before you can use them. But with your Dark Ritual, you can kind of get them out fast and dominate the game. Now, obviously, um, you, you know, 1-1 one, one creatures, especially 1-1 one, one ground creatures, are a risk. For example, if your opponent plays an Earthquake, Main, or Sideboard, it's a problem. But I think in this matchup, playing against Mono Blue, and I'm not playing with any Protocol Sorcerers in my main 60, um, you know, it's, it's, it could work. I think what's important here for the black player is to like have that dark ritual that he can, you know, start casting creatures right out of the gate. Because I think a danger for him is, uh, you know, my blue deck is very quick that I'm just too fast for him and that he's almost dead before he can start, you know, doing his control thing. So that's definitely the danger for the, for the black player. But once he's got control, he almost has to, a certain win because his creatures are just so good and I don't have a lot of answers to those 1-1 one, one creatures. I have a few but not a lot. So this is looking quite good. Now before uh, we take a look at my deck I would just like to mention that uh, Yoop recently acquired a second Juzam Jin, which is also in this deck. I believe he took out a Will of the Wisp but we'll just have to wait and see uh, you know what hits the board. So there, there's a slight change compared to this deck photo. So there's an extra Juzam in there and I think a Willow is taken out. Anyway, this is the deck of Yoop. Now let's take a look at my list. And here we see my deck Budget Blue or Mono Blue. It's made up completely out of reprint cards and um, it's, it's quite clear what this deck wants to do, right? It's super aggro, like turn one, a Flying Man or a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Then turn two, a Lord of Atlantis or maybe, you know, playing Unstable Mutation, make my creatures even bigger. Turn three, obviously I'm hoping for that uh, Surrender Pafrit and just, you know, attack, attack, attack. Use those boomerangs at the right moment, kind of as a tempo play to be able to keep attacking. I think in this matchup, boomerang can be quite uh, good, especially if I have a counter spell as well, because then I can, for example, if he gets an early Hypnotic Spectra out with the Ritual, I can hopefully boomerang it, and then when he plays it again, I can maybe counter it, you know? So uh, those are kind of the hopes that I've got. I think boomerang can also be quite good against a Royal Assassin. 
Um, for me, it's just really, really important that I get out of the gates swinging and I just, you know, try to keep attacking because as soon as he's got all those little 1-1 one -one control creatures on the board, it's going to be quite difficult for me. Although I've got a few weapons, I am playing with four psionic blasts that I can obviously use to kill all those creatures. I'm also playing with two control magics. I think control magics could be decisive in this matchup. Um, because obviously playing against Mono Black, he doesn't have any answers to the Control Magic. So Control Magic could be really important. On the other hand, he's playing with a lot of creatures though. So it's going to be tough to make that one Control Magic decisive. But maybe, you know, if I can get that Royal Assassin, that could be uh, could be quite good for me. Anyway, uh, this is my deck. I would just like to point out one card that I think is a little bit underplayed. I think it's useful as a one-off in this type of deck. And that is Sunken City. So Sunken City is two blue, a card originally from the dark. Uh, it gives all your blue creatures plus one, plus one. The problem is you've got to pay two blue during your upkeep. And that's why a lot of people don't play with it. But I think if you look at it as a sorcery that reads all blue creatures gain plus one, plus one for two blue with the ability to kind of keep it around the next turn and play it again for two blue, then all of a sudden you start looking at this card completely different. And, you know, I've actually won games on Sunken City. If you play it at the right time and you have enough creatures on the board... It, it can be really, really good. So I just want to point that out. I think Sunken City needs to get a little bit more credit, you know, in, in my humble opinion. As a one-off, of course. I wouldn't play more than one, but as, as a one-off, I think it can work. Anyway, this is my deck. We've looked at the deck of my opponent. That means we're ready. Let's go to the match. Game number one. Here we go. So Yoops on the play, starting with a Will-O-The-Wisp. And he's playing Mono Black, and I'm playing Mono Blue. Starting with an island and a merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Passing the turn there. Six cards in hand. There's a Dark Ritual. Uh-oh, there's a Royal Assassin. And Royal is such a pain, you know. It's kind of like your opponent has a really big wall. You just don't want to attack anymore. And I need to find an answer for that Royal. Then again, he cannot force me to attack yet. Remember, he is playing with four Netling Imps. He only has two cards in hand, which is also a good sign. Looks like I'm a little bit in the tank here, playing a Mistress Factory and another Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Five cards in hand and a pass. But I haven't dealt any damage yet, and that's bad news for me. So there's a third Swamp. And there's another Royal Assassin. That is really tough. There's another island, and just a pass, so no Psionic Blast. I mean, obviously, I don't want to play a Surrender Perfreed, even if I have it in hand, because I cannot really do anything. Look at that, a Mind Twist. Countering the Mind Twist, though. Phew, that's good, because all I have going for me now is the fact that I have more cards than my opponent. That's, that's the silver lining, you know? So if this Mind Twist would have resolved, it would have been a sure loss. But now I'm still in it. If I can find, for example, a Control Magic... That would be really nice. I can steal one of the royals. And I can start attacking. That's really important. So there's a fifth land for my opponent. And also a pass. So we're both kind of stuck here. There's another island. I mean, maybe I've got a brain geyser in hand. I want to build up a lot of lands, draw a lot of cards. I just need to find an answer to at least one of the Royals. Four cards in hand. I probably have at least one Surrender Pafrit in there that I don't want to play out. There's a Sinkhole. Yeah, this makes sense on the Mishra's factory. Now he could actually consider attacking with his own factory. Tapping two blue. Are we going to see a Lord of Atlantis? Okay, there's a Sunken City. So that means both of my merfolks are now tutus. There's a Juzam Jin. Wow, that is cool. Counter spell though on the Juzam. I wonder if I should counter it though. Of course, I don't know what else I have in my hand. Maybe I've got a lot of counter spells in my hand. But I think if I just play one more creature, I can then kind of make a good double block. Killing the Juzam. There's the Sengir. Like, for example, the Sengir is more scary because it's a flying creature. It's got evasion. 4-4 four, four flyer. Do I have a Psionic Blast, for example? 
Ooh, there's a control magic. So I'm going to try to control one of the royal assassins. I remember this play. And of course, my opponent can respond to that. So I wonder what he's going to do. He's really in a tank. He's trying to find a way to tap the royal that I've targeted so he can kill it with his other royal. So worst case scenario here for me, um, I'm going to trade a control magic for royal assassin, which I'm happy with. And I think one of the things that he can do here is animating the Mishra's factory, then tapping the royal that I want to steal to kill that factory, and then use his other royal to kill his royal. Yeah, look at that. So he's animating the factory here with one black. And he's then killing it with the royal I want to steal. And then he's killing that royal assassin. So yeah, I mean, basically one control magic for a factory and a royal, that's really good. The problem, of course, for me is that he still has the Sengir Vampire that I cannot block and he still has one royal assassin. And also the Willow the Wisp is super annoying for me because it can just block everything. You know, an O1 Flyer, one black regenerate. There's the attack with the Sengir, so I'm going to drop to 16. Keep paying two mana here for the Sunken City. Tapping three. I'm playing a Surrender Perfreed. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm planning something. So first of all, Surrender Perfreed is a 4-5 because of the Sunken City. So it can block the Sengir Vampire. Which is really important, of course. I don't want to keep taking hits. The problem is that, of course, Surrender deals the damage to me as well. Ooh, a second Sengir. A second Sengir. I'm not happy with that. One card in hand still for my opponent. Gonna drop to 15 because of my own Surrendip. What can I do? Playing out a Flying Man. Okay, that's also a 2-2 because of the Sunken City. Another Surrendip. So it looks like I'm kind of preparing an attack. The problem, of course, is that when I attack, he can kill one of the creatures instantly with his Royal Assassin. And then the next turn, he untaps the Royal. My creatures will still be tapped. He can kill another creature. So for one Royal, he can actually kill two of my creatures, which is huge. And look at the life total of, uh, of Yup. He's still on 20. So it's, it's really tough here. I'm going to take two points of damage now, 13. And remember, I'm only playing two Control Magics main. Looks like I'm preparing some kind of Alpha Strike here, which I think is not going to end well for me. But on the other hand, if I keep waiting, I'm going to die as well. It's, it's really tough. It's a catch-22 here. Looked like I wanted to, to tap something. Playing three. Another Surrender. This is super risky. It means next turn I'll drop to 10. So I think a scenario, perhaps I've got a boomerang in hand and I'm kind of waiting for the right moment. Uh, this is so tough though. I'm going to drop to 10. And Yoop just doesn't have to do anything. So I'm going to untap. I'm going to go to 10. I'm going to draw for turn. Play another island. Two cards in hand still. What am I going to do? What I could do here is play the boomerang and then attack with my three Surrender Befreets perhaps, kind of forcing my opponent in a difficult position. Then he would probably double block one of the Surrendips. I think, but I'm just passing turn. Interesting. Not quite sure why I'm just passing here. Okay, because I want to play the boomerang on end step, probably on the Royal Assassin. Yeah, so I'm doing this on end step, so he's taking it back. And now I guess I've got my opener, so I'm going to drop to seven. Oh, that's such a big problem, because now if I attack with... Oh, with all my flyers, that's also a problem, because he can attack me back with two Sengirs. And remember, Yoop is still on 20. That's a problem here. Tapping a blue, perhaps for an unstable mutation. So I'm trying to calculate here how much damage I can deal. Because remember, I also have the Sunken City. So those Surrender Befreeds are 4-5 Flyers. 
And this flying man is now a 5-5 five five because, you know, plus 3, plus 3 from the unstable and then plus 1, plus 1 from the sunken city. So it makes it a 5-5 five five flyer. But I mean, I need to keep at least one creature at bay, right? Yeah, so I'm keeping the Serenip at bay to potentially block the Sengirs. Am I going to attack her with the Merfolk of the Pearl Tridents? I mean, maybe. Maybe I should just go all in. On the other hand, I'm not sure because he can just gobble them up. If he does, he would take 9 damage, go to 11, which is not a big problem for him. And his Sengirs would grow to 5-5s. Five then again, I mean, I have to take a risk here. I, I'm, if I wait, I'm going to die anyway. So look at that. Attacking with everything. You're super aggressive. And let's see what Yoop's going to do. How he's going to block. Yeah, so he's blocking both of the Merfolk of the Pearl Tridents. And he's going to block my 5-5 five, five Flyer. So he takes 8 points of damage. So he's going to drop to 12. And then I think I'm actually dead. I think I made a miscalculation here. I think I shouldn't have attacked with the Merfolk of the Pearl Tridents and just hoped that my opponent would double block. Maybe I should have just attacked only with the three Surrender Befreeds because look at my life total. Next turn he can attack with two Sangiers, uh, put me on two, and the next turn I'm dead to my own Surrender. So this is, um, yeah, some bad maths from my part, but in my defense, I think I couldn't have won the game any the other way, you know. I don't really see an opener for me. But um, let's, let's see. Let's see what's going to happen next. Let's see how my brother is uh, going to win this. So there's the untap. So we've got two 5-5 five, five Sengirs. We've got the Will-O-The-Wisp. There is the Strip Mine. There's a Dark Ritual. There's the Royal again that I bounced. But it's still a Summoning Sickness, so that's okay. They're all to make matters worse and icy so you can now tap my last blocker. It doesn't matter. But, uh, you know, so I'm already tapping it. And there he goes. Yeah, absolutely dead. Like I said, I think my Alpha Strike, I made a mistake there attacking with the Pearl Tridents. But even if I wouldn't have done that, I would have died. So um, I can find some comfort in that, I guess. Anyway, a convincing win here by uh, Yoop at least. In the second game, I'll be on the play. So that gives me better chances for sure. Game number two, here we go. So it's one game up for my opponent here. So it has to happen for me. There's an island. Do I have a first turn play? No, I don't. That's a bit disappointing. My brother here is starting with a swamp. There's a second blue. There's another swamp. Tapping two black. A sinkhole. There is a boomerang. Okay, so what I can do is I can boomerang the island that he's targeting with the sinkhole, saving my island. I don't know if that's a good strategy. I could also, of course, bounce an island uh, of my opponent here so that we're kind of equalized. But I'm bouncing my own island. Obviously, this decision really depends on how many lands I've got in hand. So I guess that one island is very important for me. Finding an island from the top, it seems now, passing the turn. No Lord of Atlantis, that's unfortunate. There's a Dark Ritual. And a tap, so four mana. There's a Juzam Jin. Do I have a Counterspell? I think Counterspell is really important right now, unless, of course, I've got, for example, a Control Magic, and I can play that later, but still, then it would take 10. Yeah, I think countering this, or actually boomeranging this, which is quite nice, because he used a Dark Ritual to play it out. So boomeranging the uh, Juzam. That's at least gone for another two turns. Ooh, passing to turn you, so I am kind of stuck on land. I'm on seven. Okay, finding an island here. Finding a flying man. It looks like I want to keep two blue open as well, so I probably have counter magic in hand. And my opponent has some mana issues as well, it seems. Missed a land drop. Discarding now that Juzam. Okay, this is fantastic for me. It's giving me the time here that I need. There's an attack. Gonna put him on 19. No unstable mutation, unfortunately. There's another flying man. So building a modest army. But it's not going very fast, though. 
I mean, my opponent is giving me time because he's not finding any swamps. Look at that, even discarding a Netling Imp. Tapping. Attacking for two here. Tapping three, so I'm kind of taking a risk, offering an opening here to my opponent. No longer have counter magic up. Ooh, this is too bad though. Finding a swamp. Does he, does he have a royal? That will be really bad for me. Tapping three. Royal Assassin. Yeah, that's not what you want to see. So I made that decision to tap out, and yeah, that's been pretty brutal. Okay, got a boomerang though. That's something. Attacking now for five. And passing the turn back. There's another swamp, so he's really finding his lands now, really getting back into the game. The good thing for me is that he's already on 12. There is another royal here, or actually the same royal coming back, and now there's a counterspell. And look at my graveyard, three boomerangs and a counterspell. <laughs> That's, I must have had this really weird hand full of boomerangs. Taking another damage, going to drop to 18. Attack again for five, going to put him on seven. I'm so close now to the victory. Another surrender per free. It's going to be really tough here for, uh, for Yoop. Needs to find at least one blocker to survive. Still only has four mana. Remember, he plays with, for example, Icy Manipulator. You know, he can play the Icy, but he doesn't then have the mana to activate it. He is playing out a Hypnotic Spectre, so that's going to save him. Going to give him an extra turn. He's got a Chum Block with it, though. Attacking here for eight in total, so he's going to block. The Serenib is going to take five damage here. Going to drop to two. Going to tap a blue for a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident and another Surrendip. So again, finding all those Surrendip of Freets again. Yeah, this is just too much. He needs kind of a miracle. There's no balance in black. I think it's over here for, for my opponent here, for you. That means we've got a 1-1, one, one, which is grand because we're going to go to game number three. Game number three. Here we go. So it's 1-1. One, one. It's my opponent on the play, starting with the Soul Ring. I don't like that ramping. Don't like it. Let's see what I can do. Island into Flying Man. Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. Okay, at least it's a creature. Hopefully turn two I can find a Lord of Atlantis. I haven't seen a single Lord this whole match. Gonna tap four. What are we gonna see? Juzam? No, an Hypnotic Spectre. Okay, 2-2 two, two Flyer. That's a problem. Let's hope that I have a Boomerang or something. There's an Island. Tapping a blue. For a flying man. Okay, so I could consider chumping. Uh, it's dicey. And again, it depends what I have in hand. Attacking here with the 2 2. Thinking about chumping it. I'm in the tank. Maybe I've got a hand with a lot of cards that I don't really care about. Maybe a lot of lands, for example. Anyway, taking the damage, gonna drop to 18, gonna lose that card. Okay, it's an island. And now let's hope if I get to three mana that I've, I can cast like a Boomerang or a Psionic Blast or something. Or maybe an Unstable Mutation on the Flying Man. Ooh, there's a Sorcerer's Queen. That's a problem. That's so annoying, that Sorcerer's Queen. There's just so many good cards here against my deck in the deck of, uh, of Yoop, my opponent. There's an Island. What can I do? If I have a Psyblast, am I going to use it on the Hypnotic Spectre or should I use it on the Sorcerer's Queen? I still have four cards in hand, so probably best on the Hypnotic Spectre. Of course, it's an instant, so I can also use it later. I can now first maybe attack either, even. It looks like that's what I'm going to do here. Attacking with both creatures. Remember, the Queen still has Summoning Sickness. It's a 1-1. One, one. So there's the attack, so he's going to take two, he's going to drop to 18, so we're both on 18 here. He's going to draw for turn. There's another factory, that's annoying, so he can attack with the factory for three, he can also attack with the hippie, of course. There's just a lot of pressure here. 
Tapping the soaring again in the swamp. Oh, demonic tutor. This is just, this is. Ah, oh, this game is slipping away from me. I think that turn one soaring already was a problem. Because he could just do so much now each, every single turn with those two extra mana. So he still has one floating. I wonder what card he's going to look up. It could be a mind twist. But I think, I mean, knowing, knowing Yoop, he's probably going to look up something more fun. Well, we'll just have to wait and see. Maybe that's just me wishful thinking. But this is problematic. I mean, if I compare board states, it's looking really bad for me. I mean, again, I need a card like, you know, Control Magic. To kind of change things around. Okay, there's a Gem Daytone, so perhaps he'll look that one up. And he's probably going to attack now with the Spectre. Exactly. There's a Psionic Blast, though, on the Spectre. So I'm going to drop to 16, but I'm not going to lose a card. I'm going to go uh, to three cards in hand. And now, of course, the Queen is active. What would be really sweet is, for example, play an Unstable Mutation. Okay, going to use a Strip Mine here to strip one of the factories. And okay, there's the Sunken City. So that gives a plus one, plus one bonus. And there it is, the Unstable Mutation. So this is quite a nice way of working around the Sorcerer's Queen because the Sorcerer's Queen only changes the base power and toughness and then you still add the extra. So what my opponent is doing right now is making my Flying Man an O2, but it gets plus three, plus three from the Unstable and plus one, plus one from the Sunken City. So I'm still dealing six points of damage here, which is quite nice. So this is good. You know, I'm kind of seeing some light at the end of the tunnel. I mean, it's still looking quite good here for my opponent with that uh, book as well. Ah, oh, there's the willow. That's so annoying. That willow is, that willow is, again, it's such a good card against my deck. And now I'm just going to wait and, and see my own flying man slowly die to the unstable mutation. So it goes from a 4-4 into a 3-3. Three, three. Well, actually, it's still a 4-4 four, four because of the Sunken City. But every upkeep, there's a minus one, minus one counter added. And he's now tapping down my, uh, my Flying Man. Attacking here. It's going to take a damage. Interesting. Oh, of course, he didn't have any mana anymore to block with Willow and regenerate. So at least I was able to deal one point of damage. It's, it's something. No cards in hand for my opponent top decking at the moment, but he's got that book, of course. So now drawing for turn. Oh, there's a Nettling Imp. Yeah, this is so bad. Nettling Imp and Royal Assassin is quite a nice combo because he can tap my creature down and force it to attack. And if my creature can't attack, even though it's tapped, you know, uh, it's destroyed at the end of the turn. So yeah, this is really a big problem. Another minus one, minus one counter. So it's now a 2-2 two, two, and with the Sunken City a 3-3. Three, three. I guess all I can do really is pass the turn or just attack with everything. So he's now tapping down the Flying Man. So I could consider attacking with the Merfolks of the Pearl Trident, but he can simply kill one with the, um, with the Factory and turn the other one into an O2. Well, I guess I could still then deal one point of damage. It's so bad. I'm so dead. I, I, I don't see a way out of this. I mean, what could work here for me? I'm trying to think what cards in my deck can help me. He's on 11. Maybe if I can find like three Psyblasts. Right? I mean, that's the only scenario. Right? Brain Geyser and then like draw a lot of Psyblasts. I've already played out one though, but I'm playing four in the deck. And of course, a Control Magic doesn't hurt, but... Yeah, now he's doing that trick, right, where he forces my Flying Man to attack and he taps it down. That means it dies. I mean, it was going to die anyway to the Unstable, but... And he draws an extra card from the Tome. Like, he's got ultimate control. That's looking super bad for me. Super bad. 
I mean, if you can also find like a Sengir, it would be even worse. Tapping three, Royal, also bad. Royal Icy Manipulator, he's, he can start, he's, he already had that killer combo with Imp and Icy, but now he's got Icy, Royal Assassin, another nice combo. Yeah, killing my Flying Man here. And again, I'm at this decision point. Do I also want to attack with my two Merfolks? I don't think I should. I mean, all I can do really maybe keep cards in my hand. I'm not going to though. I'm just going to keep playing them out, kind of feeding them here to that uh, machine, killing machine of my opponent. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be super tough now. My only line of winning is really through the Psionic Blasts, I think. So I could, if, if, if I want to win with the Psionic Blast, one of the things I could do is try to get him on 8. I have no idea how, but that would mean I only need 2 Psionic Blasts. I mean, I'm on 16. I think I've got no cards in hand, and it's just awful. There's not a lot of pressure, though, on the board. So he's going to kill here my Surrender Before He could have waited, of course, until uh, I took a damage from it, but maybe he wants to attack already this turn. No, he doesn't. Passes the turn. Oh, one card in hand. Yep, and of course he's going to force one of my creatures to attack, and he can kill it. Just attack it with both here. So he's going to block one and pump, kill the Merfolk, block the other one, probably on the Willow, exactly. Like, there's, there's nothing I can do here. Okay, play a Sayani Blast. Oh, killing a creature. I don't understand why I'm doing this. I should play all the Sayani Blasts on my opponent. It's my only way out of this. I think this is a bad move. I think he should have played the Sayani Blast to the face, to the dome, you know. That would have put him on seven. It's as close as I'm going to get because I'm not going to win this. I'm not going to get through this wall with like combat damage. That's not going to happen. Tapping four. What is he going to do? There's a Juzam Jin. Okay, at least he's going to win in style, I guess. He can attack now with the 2-2. Two, two. Put me on 12. Tapping 3 here. Okay, there's an Hypnotic Spectre. Oh, things just keep getting worse and worse and worse. And he still has the mana open to tap my Merfolk of the Pearl Trident next turn. Play an island. It's going to force me to attack. That's it. I'm saying, you know, you've got this one. <laughs> I'm giving up, but I still think, okay, there was a counter spell there. I still think, and obviously it's, it's easy when I look back at this and kind of do, to go through my decision making. But like I said, I think I should have played the side blast on the face because that was my out. You know, maybe I, I draw into a brain geyser. I let my sunken city die. I draw a lot of cards. Maybe I find some more, you know, damage or some kind of weird control magic or an opening to deal some points of damage. You know, I just think, you got to play towards your outs. Anyway, a very convincing win in game number three. And I think overall the black deck is really the uh, the better deck in this matchup. Maybe, you know, if I sideboard in the right way, put some Tims in. Phantasmal Terrain can be quite good also against uh, the factories. And it makes my creatures, of course, when I give them Island Walk unblockable. It uh, makes them unblockable. So maybe, you know, that kind of could somehow, you know... Give me, give me an advantage or a chance at least, a fighting chance. But uh, for now, I would say that the Mono Black deck was really the better deck in this matchup. Thank you, Yoop, for bringing it to the table and uh, showing some Netling Imps again here on the channel. That's nice. It's always nice to see creatures that don't see a lot of play here on Timmy Talks. And before we go, I'd like to ask you to like, comment, and share. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And of course, I'd like to ask you to become a patron on patreon.com slash TimmyTalks. Go and check it out because then your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor?
ik het als ik het als zomba kan zien.